as I was starting to say before, when I began at Backstage, it was back in 1977, and I had to start getting together my stable of reviewers for cabaret, for theater mostly. There were certain criteria by which I judged whether I would want to hire is a kind of funny word, but uh, <laughs> use <laughs> for the amount of money I was paying them. But you know, help me decide whether this person would make a good reviewer or not. One of them, of course, was the person's passion for the art. That was a necessity. Another uh, qualification, of course, was that he was a good writer. He or she was a good writer. Um, third was that he had a, some background. Stephen, I specifically said to you, <laughs> at least put it on silent for now. No, I did. Yeah. Um, I hate to hear it when it's on. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't afford it. Um, that he had some sort of theater going experience by which he can judge other shows that he was going to see. It helps set everything in context. Another part of the, the person's personality would be how open or how flexible how open the person would be. I mean, was he so rigid that only he liked certain things and would ignore other things? No, that person had to be open to accept, to see all kinds of theater and be able to judge it in context. So, fast forward many, many years later, those standards may exist, but now, Anyone could write a review. I mean, when I began, I started with an electric typewriter. The idea of a, uh, a word processor wasn't even used then. But there are blogs, there are websites, there are chat rooms, and you see more and more people writing reviews of other people. Um, I have my thoughts about some of those reviews, and I'd like you all to kind of chime in and tell me what are some of the advantages of having so many people writing about various artists, and what are some of the disadvantages? Roy. Okay. Um, the obvious advantage is that it gets more opinions out there. Um, there is a disadvantage, but that's qualified by something I'm going to say in a minute. A disadvantage is anyone can do it. There's a lot of crap out there. But then again, there's been crap in the New York Times. As, as I went to a drama desk luncheon years ago, and one of the critics on the panel said, you must recognize that a gorilla could be writing reviews for the Times and he have influence. So I believe the bottom line is the audience, the readers, have to judge for themselves whether a person's opinion is worthy of consideration. Base it on your own standards, your own judgment. Um, John Simon, who I probably respect more than I do any other critic in the world, has a blog. Uh, he no longer writes for, uh, the New, as you all know, for, yeah. for New York Magazine, and not even for Bloomberg.com anymore. Yeah. It's the Westchester Guardian and the Yonkers Tribune, which itself is a blog. His opinion is worth reading, whether you agree with it all the time or not. So. But again, the bottom line, the audience has to judge, the readers have to judge for themselves. It's a very, very complicated question. <clears throat> I mean, it's a very, very complicated question, and there isn't really one answer to it. I think it's true in a larger sense of, uh, of the general media conversation that's happening now in all areas of the media. It's a, it's a diversification of the media, uh, and uh, so you've got a lot more people writing. The problem is there isn't a centralized authority anymore. There aren't any gatekeepers the way there used to be. There isn't a common cultural conversation in the way there used to when be. When you say gatekeepers, that. meaning the editors well, yeah, having, of having a large institutional authorities with a great deal of power to decide what gets seen or read or heard uh, helps shape the conversation in a much, narrow, in a much narrower way. Uh, 
which is bad in some ways when the people who are making those decisions are not qualified or are not uh, ideal, uh, but is good in that everyone is having the same conversation and everyone is uh, getting the same sources and can react to it one way or the other. The problem with the diversification is that it's increasingly easy for uh, niche programming or niche writing or niche listening to happen. So everyone who has an opinion or a style can go to the news channel or the radio station or the internet site of their choice that already tells them what they want to hear, uh, or what they already think, uh, what they already think they know. And so you, you get uh, people sort of just in the smaller and smaller little niches of the world um, talking to themselves or people very, very much like themselves rather than uh, having a sort of a more open conversation with a larger group. I mean, the, the, the former model certainly had disadvantages. And uh, I think we can look back on the history of the in television media, for example, and see the parochialism and some of the decisions that were, you know, uh, and the limitations on who could speak and when. Um, but the new version has problems as well. And I think that, uh, personally, obviously, I'm invested in the old version to the extent that I work for you know, a, a large media organization. I have a job, one of the f few jobs uh, in New York for what I do that I get actually paid for. Uh, so yes, I am invested in the old system. But I also really believe that there is an advantage, in theory, not always in reality, but there's an advantage to there being a process by which people are chosen who are experts in their field in theory uh, and who can build up a relationship with a readership over time that, they can, uh, that the people can uh, know them and decide against their taste what they would agree with or disagree with. You could, if there's a critic that you know you disagree with often, then that can be just as helpful as a critic that you know you agree with. Uh, but you have to be reading the same critic uh, you know, for a while to know that. Um, and just sort of having a potpourri of voices out there um, is to some extent uh, limiting. Um, I was just going to interject and say what I find is that many of the reviews are more like thumbs up, thumbs down. And what's missing in a lot of the reviews are the, is the analysis that was once more forthcoming in other reviews. Go ahead, Melody. Yeah, I'd like to comment on all of this, of course. Um, something I do, we talk about genre-based things, is I go to publications where I don't like them a lot of the times. Where the Huffington Post, um, I really disagree with most of the time. So I got on their staff to... <laughs> <laughs> Scott Barbarino. <laughs> well, he's not the Huffington Post. So Scott, on the other hand, Scott, Scott is like this sort of genius where he's like, said, Melanie, I want you to write. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm not writing. I want to sing. I'm not singing right now. I don't know what I do. He said, right. But he wanted to make sure that I wanted it enough to the point where I had to go to him four times and finally go into his office and grab out a CD and write it, uh, the review. And from that, he saw that I really had the hunger to write. Um, so um, that's, that's what I do. I manage to, to write in things that are not my niche um, politically. And, um, but I do write about what I know or what I think I know. You know I'm not going to say I'm writing about what I don't know. but. Um, you know, there are a lot of cabaret shows that are very self-serving. And um, I think a big part of that, the problem is real estate. I mean, right now, it's about, and I hate this phrase, it's about getting tushies into chairs. And Wait, let's go back to the yes, critical, go ahead. To, to, to the kind of reviews that you write. Uh -huh. I write very analytical reviews. I'm a singer, and I was an actress, and I don't say someone was good and someone was bad. If, oh, I do. But if I do, I say why. I say what is extraordinary about them or what is lacking. I, I offer contributions because I know a lot about vocal technique. But what is your take on everyone else who's going up and writing about it? Do you find that it's a great place because there's just lots more discussion happening? I found that on Yelp is when I really got some uh, chops going. I think these restaurant review things are great. Um, so um, I don't, I don't, of course I don't like too much competition out there, but you have to really, 
really make a voice for yourself to, to stick out. And I, I, don't, I don't like the fact that everybody can get on, but I like the fact that I can get on. I don't know if I would have been able to get on without this type of media the way it is now. It's very, um, you know, I have my ups and downs about it. I don't know if I would have got on if it wasn't for blogs. I doubt it. Hmm. Uh, not that I'm not, I am in a published magazine. I am in uh, Cabaret Scenes, which is published. Right. And so I'm not saying that wasn't going to happen, but print it's certainly... Print publications are a rarity. And we have two, exactly. We still have two print publications here. Right. I mean, uh, backstage used to cover Cabaret on a regular basis. And then when I left, out it went. Mm -hmm. Out it went. They do occasionally um, for some of the uh, bigger names, the high-profile rooms, but not very often. Let's look at the... Can I make one Go ahead. Sure, Will. Uh, as far as the, the, the diversity of opinions goes, uh, it would, it, it, at some point it would be helpful to have either a club owner or a publicist here. And they, if they were here, they would probably say that you could take a thousand blogs and it would mm -hmm. not put butts in seats, as she says, as much as one review in the Times. Right. I mean, exactly. it's, 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 if they all were you know, up in arms and unanimous, it would not have the power yeah. of the Times. The Times has more power than ever. I like to think the Journal has a little power. But um, I think everything else is like, you know, Time Out, the Journal, we're all are very far. Yeah. You know, the Time Out, it's the Times and Time Out, the Journal, and then every blog in the world put together, you know, is kind of a pecking order. And that hasn't changed. You could have, there could be a thousand more blogs reporting in Cabaret tomorrow, and still, you know, the, the Times will have all the, the power and the glory, as they say. I don't know what's going to change it. Or if it even should be changed, the Times is a very fair voice overall. But I'm just saying. That, as, a, as a writer who has experience, who has